For this problem, we are asked to consider a two-span continuous beam subjected to dead load and live loads. The dead load consists of a uniformly distributed load with a magnitude of 800 pounds per linear foot, and the live loads consists of four point loads applied at the third points of each span, each with a magnitude of 12 kips. We're going to evaluate load combination number two from the ASCE7 standard, but we're going to use both minimum and maximum load factors applied to the dead load. Additionally, we're going to consider the cases where the live load is applied to both spans, as is shown here, the case where the live load is applied only to span one, and the case where the live load is applied only to span two. For this problem, we'll first do our beam analysis, and then we'll factor the resulting service level bending moments. This beam is indeterminate, so the analysis is not trivial. In practice, an engineer would likely use a computer program or design tables to perform this analysis, and I chose the latter approach using design tables out of Chapter 3 of the AISC Manual of Steel Construction. You can see here that I have bending moment diagram for the service dead loads drawn with a maximum positive bending moment of 50 kip feet and a maximum negative bending moment of 90 kip feet as well as bending moments resulting from the application of all four of the service live loads, giving us a maximum positive bending moment of 80 kip feet and a maximum negative bending moment of 120 kip feet. Next, we'll apply load combination number two at various locations of interest along the length of the beam that are indicated with the green lines. If we define the left end of the beam as x equals zero, then under the first point load, or at x equals 10 feet, we see that we have a factored moment m sub u equal to 188 kip feet. Similarly, at the location of the interior support at x equals 30 feet, we can see that we have a factored moment m sub u equal to negative 300 kip feet. Without any further analysis, we could design our beam for a positive moment of 188 kip feet and a negative moment of 300 kip feet. However, if we consider the possibility that the live load acts only in the first span and not in the second span, we end up with a positive live load bending moment in the first span, but a negative live load bending moment in the second span. In fact, the live load moments in the first span are higher than they were when the live loads were present in both spans concurrently. Applying the load combination to this case, we actually end up with a larger factored moment, m sub u, than we did when the live load was applied to both spans concurrently. Additionally, since the dead load moment and the live load moment have opposite signs at the same locations in the second span, it may be prudent to consider using the smaller value of the dead load factor in that case. As you can see here, evaluating the load combinations in span 2 with the minimum values of the dead load factor actually results in more critical values for the factored moment m sub u. Next, we'll consider the case where the live load is applied in span two, but not in span one. The analysis of the beam and the evaluation of the factored moment, m sub u, is very similar to the case where the live load was applied to span one, but not span two, and we can use symmetry to evaluate most of these values. Finally, we can compare our factored bending moment diagram resulting from the application of the factored dead load and the factored live load applied to both spans with a moment envelope that results from superimposing the moment diagrams from the three cases where the live loads were applied to both spans, the case where the live load was applied only to span one, and the case where the live load was applied only to span two. Additionally, a dead load factor of 1.2 was applied in cases where the service dead load moment and the service live load moment had the same sign, and a dead load factor of 0.9 was applied in cases where the service dead load moment and the service live load moment had opposite signs. Note that incorporating a maximum and minimum value for the dead load factor is not in strict keeping with the application of the load combinations in the ASCE 7 standard. However, the Astro Bridge Design specification does require us to evaluate both the maximum and minimum values of the load factor that is applied to the permanent loads. All right, that's the end of this example. Thank you.